morning wednesday april 28 2021 and to god be the glory for yet another beautiful day that we are able to experience we hear in the background welcome holy spirit we are in your presence fill us with your power live inside of us i would say say this song and sing this song when i was jogging years ago i would say morning good morning holy spirit i am in your presence and when i would jog toward the east and see the sun would rise Ooh, it was such a powerful experience now we might not be outside it's raining it's damp but still we want the lord's presence to be within us because we're going to be confronting some situations today and the enemy has hatched a plan before you know while we were asleep and while we were doing this so we want to have god's power because he is the everlasting source he's the never drying fountain he's our stream he's our counselor and our comforter and we want him to take complete control of this day i went back to second samuel 11 and i i read some more detail as far as how like i said david the the warrior the triumphant one teenager shepherd you know playing the harp right he was the one who took care of the sheep and, and was victorious, you know, with the bear and the lion and, you know, a, a man after God's own heart. But still, just that little bit of room. And it just, whew, I didn't realize three times he tried to, to set Uriah up. First time he was like, you know what, uh, wash your feet. You know, you've been in a, on a, in a journey for a long time. And that's when Uriah sat at the door, you know. And then the second time, he took him to the palace to eat with David and to get drunk. <laughs> Look, that night, he didn't go home. He still sat with the mercenaries, his, his fighting men. He didn't go home. He was like, I couldn't do that. And then the third time, this is really what tripped me out. It said that... David wrote a letter and he sent it with Uriah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, it had to be a sealed letter. But Uriah did, was so faithful, he didn't even think to open the letter. And you know what the letter said. Joab, make sure that you put Uriah on the front lines and have him killed. So Uriah was that trusting. What? And we know what happened. So three times, David was really like out of character. But that's what the enemy will do to us. we will be like, what is going on? This is not him. That's right. It's not her. It's not that person. It's a force. It's the enemy. So the next chapter, it picks up where Nathan the prophet, you know, reveals. He goes through that story about the sheep and the you and the lamb and all that. But there's something that really struck me because there was judgment, we know, in David's house. And David was very sorrowful. We know that's what um, he wrote in Psalms 52, created me a clean heart, Lord. Oh. And he also fasted. And he fasted for six days at least. And then the seventh day, because we knew that Bathsheba was with child, the child dies. So he was without food or anything. And then it says that, that in verse 21, he fasted and wept for the child while it was alive. But when the child was dead, mm. and then it says in verse 21, Yes, what thing is this that thou hast done? Because the people were like, why are you eating? And this is what he did. David rose up from the earth because, you know, he was mourning. He washed himself. He anointed himself. He changed his clothes and he went to the house of the Lord. I believe that's when he wrote all those psalms, especially 52. Uh, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Get me back in the right relationship. He worshiped, then he came to his own house, and then that's when he ate. The Lord wants us to, to do what he did. He 
fasted and prayed while there was hope for that child. That child was alive. A situation might be still alive in your life. It is time for us to turn the plates over because we have been assigned to that situation. <laughs> because we're the ones to offer hope in that situation. Then when the situation is dead, then the Lord will give us marching orders. But in the meantime, Psalms 28, he wrote this. It says, O Lord, my rock, be not silent unto me. He is praying. Hear the voice of my supplication when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands. Okay? So the Lord wants us to lift up our hands, lift up that situation, to be the ones to make a difference while we have a chance. Yes, we, we are dealing with some sore situations, but the Lord wants us to bloom where he has planted us. Then he'll tell us what to do in the next situation. You have anything to say? Do you have any determination? Yeah. The Lord wants us to thrive. So let's fast and pray. Let's make sure that we're not being used. Let's be woke. Let's be alert because the enemy walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But let us have the whole armor of God so that we can do great things. Have a wonderful Wednesday.